Hi, it's Mr. Bernard. In this short video, I want to talk about installing stringer on a wall, both interior walls and exterior walls. There's some important details for the cutout stringer that's underneath the tread over here against this wall. In this case, this is an exterior wall. So behind the wall finish, you're going to find a vapor barrier and insulation. Part of the problem is, is installing the wall finish itself. Typically, the wall finish goes on after the stairs are built. So, how did this drywall get installed without painstakingly cutting it around the shape of the stairs? How did this piece of trim get installed without doing the same? And finally, how was the vapor barrier installed so that it was continuous from the top side of the stairs through past the stringer to the underside of the stairs? This video is going to answer those questions. The trick to installing the wall finish, any trim, and the vapor barrier without having to do any cutting or sealing of those things is to plan for those things before you install the stringer. This drawing shows how this house was built so that the vapor barrier could be stalled continuously and the drywall and the trim piece could be put in without cutting around the stair shape. This shows the cross section through the wall. The squiggly lines the insulation the purple line is the vapor barrier, and the step line is the stringer. This is a side view of the same thing, and as you can see, there's the steps. When I installed this stringer underneath the tread right here, the first thing I did is I stapled a piece of polyethylene vapor barrier. It's six mil UV stabilized uh, material, and it gets, got stapled onto the studs following the approximate line of the stairs. It's about 16 inches wide. Remember the stair stringer is made out of a piece of 2x10, so that's why the purple lines are sticking out farther than the stair stringer. When the vapor barrier went on the studs, it, can go, it gets stapled onto the studs here, and it gets sealed against the piece of plastic that's exposed on the top of the stairs here, and the same thing can happen on the bottom of the stairs. So that takes care of the continuous vapor barrier. The second problem is installing the wall finish and the trim without cutting the stair shape out of it. That's easy to fix also. The way it, that's dealt with is by installing a spacer between the wall and the stringer. In this case, there's a 2x4 spacer that's nailed to the studs before the stringer is nailed to the studs. That's shown as this gap right here. All that had to be done for the drywall is that it needed to be cut approximately the right angle and then slid in behind the stringer. And then the trim piece was cut with parallel sides it was slid in betwe between the stringer and then the treads and the risers are butted in to, to this to cover the little gap that was left. This piece is three quarters of an inch thick. The drywall is a half inch thick. A half inch plus three quarters is one and a quarter. The spacer was two by four so there was plenty of room to slide both the drywall and this trimmer piece with the plain stringer into that gap without fighting anything. Installing a stringer on an interior wall is much the same. The big difference is there's no vapor barrier. But the spacer piece is important there too. The most important thing is to make sure whoever's installing the drywall or trim does not have to cut a stair shape out of the drywall or trim to make it fit around the stringer or the risers and the treads. Again, install that spacer and the installation of that wall finish is easy to do. Little details like this are easy to forget, but they're critical to the successful installation of your stairs. This is Mr. Bernard. I hope this has been helpful and I'll see you again soon.